Hello there, welcome along. This is Business Connections Live. It is programme number 48 and a fabulous show lined up for you uh, this evening. My name is Steve Hunt. It's lovely to have you with us. OK, Business Connections Live, what are we going to be talking about tonight? Uh, we're going to be talking about net winning. Yes, you heard me right. Not networking, but net winning. The new way of networking to develop your business. How many times do you go to a networking event and you just don't really feel that you're getting perhaps maybe any return on that event that you've been to? How many times do you try to realize as well that when you go out there and you're talking to different people that maybe you're not getting your message over either? Is it all about the ethos of the way that you do things or is it about the event that you're actually going to? And what if you're a woman in business as well? Does it make a difference? Should there be different events for women? Or should there be something that's a little bit more multi-gender and is all about business and it doesn't matter what you are, doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Uh, with me this evening we've got Jane Hardy, she's the Managing Director of Fabulous Women. Uh, they're a networking organisation, aren't you? We are, but with a difference. With a real difference, with isn't it? With a real it? difference. It's all about connecting, sharing, supporting growing and celebrating others successes. Now you're the managing director of this fine organization but you haven't always been the managing director of this particular company. You were a hard-nosed businesswoman weren't you? I was for a while <laughs> yes. <laughs> then it changed. Uh, you had an illness. I did. But, but prior to the illness you were selling sort of um, multi multinationals, you were selling big expensive uh, packages to them for software and, and stuff like that, weren't you? Yes, I was selling into financial organisations and government departments. So what's your so background before that? Are you, a are you a sales professional or are you, um, are you, are you a, a kind of a techie based person? What, what are you? Um, well, I started off as in marketing customer service and naturally, well, the company naturally um, promoted me through mm -hmm. to sales. Because you were so good. Because I was pretty good, yes. <laughs> And it was all about building relationships with people as well. So do you think we've lost that a little bit these days when it comes to business, or do you think we're going more towards building relationships? Uh, there seems to be there was always this, this chase and then the kill yes. when it came to sales. And now you're hearing more and more organisations are looking at being more empathetic with their with their actual customers and working closer with them to get the right result for both people, both the customer and the sales team. Is, do you think it's, that's the way it's going? At the Absolutely it is and it's also about collaboration. So where two small businesses um, might then be able to collaborate together to then go and upsell or service a larger organisation. Together we're stronger and we uh, fabulous women are constantly surveying our members to say what do you like, what don't you like, what would you like to see more of. I'm there on the ground with them as well. I go to every other meeting. Now you talked about fabulous women there and I, I would imagine yes. there are people that are in business at the moment that are rolling their eyes <laughs> when they hear oh fabulous women because yes. I mean we've looked at the government recently and David Cameron's come under some criticism for maybe putting well, well putting more women into his government which is a good thing yes but you know can they do the job is it's the next question uh, when you have organizations that are specifically for one particular gender do you sometimes get a resistance to that we are predominantly female, but we do welcome marvellous men as well. And as an example, Antonio Falco, um, sales guru, mm -hmm. he's actually my mentor and a marvellous man too. Oh, right. So, so it is. So it's fabulous women. Predominantly. Predominantly. Yes. But marvellous men as well. As long as they believe in collaboration, helping, supporting the women and net winning our way. I, I like the welcome. idea. There's a definition that we've got of net winning, which is, which is quite amazing. Maybe we should just get the elephant out of the room right now. Yes. Net winning. Your 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 slogan for net winning is, Connect. it's about connection. But you said that um, if you're going to a networking event, yes. if you're looking for sales, then you're actually going to a sales meeting, aren't you? Yes. So you just got to be very careful about the differentiation here, haven't you? Absolutely. If it was about a sales meeting, networking. It would be called a sales meeting. It's not. It's net winning, and together we can win together. Do you know, there's a, there's a thought that goes through my mind that maybe perhaps there should be somebody out there 
who starts an organization which is just called the sales meeting <laughs> and, and, and just be completely honest about it yeah. I'm here to sell uh, the trouble is you go to lots of networking events and there's a lot of people there selling but very few people are actually buying but remember it isn't about that when you go to a networking event it's about the collaboration and it's about actually sort of building your network of people uh, that can actually purchase from you in the long term or maybe even recommend you on I suppose isn't it absolutely one of the lawyers that's a member she now gets 75 percent of her business through people that we know recommending recommending them Jane let's have a little bit of a, a gander at you actually in <laughs> in operation here this is what one of the fabulous women um, one of the fabulous women meetings actually looks like and you'll see Jane Hardy there introducing it to her team of assembled people that are in the room have a look at this Well, good morning, ladies. I'm Jane Hardy, and I'm the owner of Fabulous Women. And like it says on the new banner, and I've got my new business cards, and you're all going to get new badges shortly. Um, it is all about connecting, sharing, growing, and succeeding, because together we're all so much stronger than we are as individuals. And um, I always like to think that Several heads are greater than one. We can't all be experts at everything. And I always say, wherever possible, to outsource or ask for help, don't try and struggle on your own. Because if you either don't enjoy something or you're not very good at it, it's going to hold you back from succeeding. So, connect, share, grow and succeed. Yeah, yeah, there's Jane in um, action there, really giving a bit of an introduction to what Fabulous Women is all about. If you have a look at the website here, Fabulous Women, Connect, Share, Grow and Succeed, uh, you can see here, I mean, yes, while it is all about ladies and we've got marvellous men that are involved on this as well, but you, you'll find that it, there's a different ethos to the way that Fabulous Women is run. I think sometimes um, women in business can actually be nearly sidelined a teeny weeny bit, can't they? Because you, you've met Linda, who is my business partner, Yes. here at Business Connections Live. Yes. I mean, we'd like to think we're equal. I'm just not as equal as she is. Yes. Um, she's really the boss. But I mean, do you find that there is still this perception of women in business that they are nearly second class citizens to a, say, a certain extent? Or they're always considered to be the PA or the secretary? There is that, but people in general only do that at their peril. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, true. I, I believe that. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So, so what you're saying there then is that the the essence of this is that we are all equal in this. Then, when it we comes are. to it, yes, it's all about community and helping and supporting each other. And a small business, whether they've just started out, they have to wear many hats. Whether it's accounts, sales, customer service, there's a multitude of issues that they have to face mm -hmm. and the more experienced of us are there to help them and affordable training and that's what it's about if you give if you give naturally without a an agenda sales and support automatically follow. Do, you, do you think we in general get networking wrong yes. when, when we go networking do you, do you think there are techniques that we should actually be using when we go to a networking event Yes. What, what kind of techniques do you think we should use? Less is more. Be as specific as you can be. Don't forget to smile. You're there to net win. You are not there to sell. Networking is a process. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the sales process. But networking is the first stage where you go out and meet people. The second stage is you organise those one-to-one -one meetings. Find out about somebody. How can you help them? keep in touch, link in with them, tweet about them, help them, support them. That's how friendships, relationships and trust is built. Is it very much the sales process in as much as that what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, really get an appointment to meet somebody? You're not, yes. I, I think a lot of people when they go to the networking events are actually trying to sell, aren't they? Yes, they are. And what you're really trying to do is you're trying to get an opportunity for a meeting or a recommendation at a later date. Absolutely. It's, it's, you make the phone call to get a meeting. You go to the net winning meetings to meet people, to put a date in the diary to find out more about them and how you could potentially help each other. Now, you've, you've 
obviously taken control of this over the years. You, you've been the managing director for how long now? Six months. For six months, but you've invested a lot of money into this and you're, you're seeing the growth of Fabulous Women now, which is important. It is. What do you think women in business should be considering when, they go, when they're going out, when they're actually working, when they go to these net winning events? Yes. What are the, I mean, are they at a disadvantage? What techniques should they be using? Is it all about being women to women or is it about women to business? It's women to business, like men to business. Mm -hmm. Go with the idea of going out there to help and meet and seek opportunities for yourself or opportunities to help others. And that's what helps relationships grow. It's not about selling, it's about service. How can I serve you? Mm -hmm. And sales come naturally, whatever the widget or the service is. Okay. But not necessarily in the room, it's probably After. through the room. Yes, and that's or what, people they know. And the format that you do for the actual meetings are what you, so you go to quite a lot of the meetings anyway, do. don't you? Yes. So you stand up there in front and uh, you give them a bit of a, uh, sort of a grounding, I would imagine, on what they're trying to achieve at the event, yes. at the day. Yes. And then you actually go through the networking event, I would imagine, afterwards, uh, people talking to each other. And do you have specific times where you're talking, or do you give each other different times? Is it card exchange, or is it is it quite is it a bit like speed dating, I suppose? <laughs> a bit like speed dating initially. Do you have a whistle? <laughs> no. Move on! <laughs> no, we do not have any whistles or any novelties. No, uh -huh. we do have the 60 seconds and less is more. An NLP practitioner stood up the other day and said, I am looking for a male with a heart condition that smokes because I can help him. And he sat down. He was so specific. And that was specific. all? That, that was that the pitch? Was it. That was the pitch. He was so specific as to what he wants. Don't go rambling on, just think of one thing at a time. Just one thought. And he got three referrals from that netwinning quite, meeting. And it's interesting, it, and that was a man. That was a that man. That was one of the marvellous men. And one of the marvellous men, yes. No, no. Listen, we'll come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it in just a moment. Uh, if you're wondering what NLP is, it's Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, it's, it's easy for me to say, they say. Uh, but the thing about it is it's all about common sense. We used to use it a lot in shopping television. Uh, you may hear phrases like this when people are on the air, they will turn around and they'll, they'll say um, something along the lines of, uh, by now, you've probably made up your mind that you want these glasses. Subconsciously, I've said to you, by now. I mean, it's just one of the techniques that's used with NLP. But uh, NLP, very, very powerful, but actually a lot of people reckon it is nothing more than just common sense. Uh, and we hope to have a guest on that soon, actually talking about NLP and how NLP can help you in business as well. Now, while we're talking about business, uh, let's talk about a business that's done very well just recently. Uh, they've won the Queen's Award for Enterprise for Innovation. Uh, last week's program, we were talking to Tom Higgins, CC CEO of Goldine. Just to give you a bit of a reminder of what Tom was talking about, let's look back at last week's edition of Business Connections Live. Uh, my guest this evening is Tom Higgins. He's the CEO of Goldeye, and they've recently been given the Queen's Award for Enterprise for Innovation. Now, this is the award that you get when you win the Queen's Award for Enterprise and this is in the innovation category so on this side it says this I don't know if you can see that and then on the other side well, you can actually see the crest you as can well. see the crest the Queen's Award crest and so you get presented this when you win this very coveted award that we have won the Queen's Award for Enterprise in Innovation. I, I think there's a lot of mystery around these awards and how they work and so I can sort of clear that up a bit and help other people apply for them so they can win is with the Queen's Award then you do apply yourself so you're not nominated by someone else although you can in fact be but you apply yourself and you fill in a questionnaire with a lot and lot of bits on it. It does open doors um, it, uh, immediately a UK TI called me which was what the DTI was called and said we want to help you with your exporting so uh, you become suddenly uh, um, visible to a lot of places where you were not visible before so so you get a lot you get a lot of coverage there ex um, outside of the UK. Inside the UK everybody knows who the Queen is and they just um, I think it increases businesses uh, but in a more subtle way it just validates more of what you do so it just says you are a proper company because if you produce something great 
and nobody knows about it, you're not going to sell very well. So you can rely on word of mouth to a certain extent, and it's very useful. Networking is incredibly important. But the more PR you do to beef up the image and to make sure everybody is aware of your products and your services and how good they are, the better it gets. Now, part of PR is our is appearing on shows like this so people know who mm -hmm. we are, which is fantastic and, and really does help. Um, magazines, internet, but also the awards side so that other people applying to the awards and who are going to the awards ceremonies can see it. I'm a judge for the Global Business Awards now because I, I decided that was something I was interested in doing. You can only do that if you've won quite a lot of awards, then they will consider you as a judge. It's not a paid thing, it's just something I do um, because it's interesting. And I see a lot of submissions and where people haven't bothered to explain their business clearly or where they've just thrown something together, they don't win. Where they've explained it in the format you've asked them to put it in, because if you've got 10 to judge against and they all look different and one of them has followed the, the format that you've been asked to put it in, they're going to be higher up in the ranking in your mind because it's very easy to digest the information. Right, well, I think right from the beginning you need to think about PR when you're constructing your company. Uh, I was at lunch with a friend the other day and he said, I'm thinking of starting my own business in about five to 10 years and I've never spoken to anyone who has such a long time frame in mind. Um, what should I do? But it was, it was really interesting actually for him to think so far ahead and the, what I said is, first thing you need to think about is what are you really, really good at? What's your niche product? What can you do better than other people? So you've got a really good product. And the next thing is, how do you tell people about that product? And that's where PR comes in. And PR consists of a number of different things. So it's really about, it's very different from selling. It's about increasing the knowledge of your brand in the world so people know who you are. And part of that, a really important part for us, is video. So something like this is extremely important to us. But video at events, if you go to an event and you're exhibiting, you can be recorded. If you uh, win an award, as we did, you can be recorded. We, we employ the company to come and, um, sorry TV, to come and record us so that we had a record of that, so that we could show that. The importance of personalizing a business um, is, uh, you, you can't, um, you can't say how big it is. Um, you have to be able to connect with people. So you can do that with video very well because you're moving and people can connect with you. You can do that with Twitter. You can do that with LinkedIn. So social media, really key to, to getting people to connect with you as a person. On our website, we have a picture of me and that's not just because I'm vain. It's so that people can have a face to the business. Your clients will often, if they're abroad, as a lot of ours are, they won't meet you, they won't see you. But if they can see your picture, they can connect with you as a person, and then your face becomes the face of the business, so you've personalized that business. Take that all the way through your PR and your marketing, um, and then you've got a very strong message there, so people then understand your business is an extension of your personality. So you have to have the right personality that suits your business. Um, I believe in um, being out there, being uh, wearing bright clothes, wearing my bright glasses, um, so that people recognize that. Um, I didn't start life like that. I started life as wearing blue suits and white shirts and, and not being terribly excited on, the, excited on that side. But I realized that, um, first of all, being a company owner, I could. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to wear just the same as everybody else. And, I, and I, from that came the benefits that I saw of people remembering me. And I see people and they say, oh, I remember you, you're the person with the bright shirts. You're the person with your face on the website. You're the person in the videos that we see. So adding um, the personalization side of it really, really helps. If you then take that through into your selling, when you go into meet a client, they're really pleased to see you because they think that they know you. They feel they've already got a connection with you, which has been built with your PR um, that you've done all the time. So you're always keeping the brand awareness bubbling along with the PR messages going out. You're tweeting out so that people are aware of your feelings. You're commenting on events in the world. You're leaking into those comments about your product and about your services and about how you can help people. And all of it builds a strong message. If you think about some very well-known brands like Virgin, you just say the word Virgin, Virgin Atlantic, um, 
and it means something to someone. It, it carries an image, in that case it carries an image of trust and of quality. That's the sort of image that you want to build up. If you say Goldeye, our company name to people, they think very solid products, very good customer support, they really know what they're talking about and they know about their industry. We can go to them for expert advice. So this is where we use the whole, all of the toolkit around PR and marketing to build that image together, to keep that going. So excellent products and services, strong PR in print media, in online media and in video to combine it all together and then something fantastic like this event. Uh, a fantastic show there. That was Tom Higgins from Goldeye. And of course, well done to Tom once again. Uh, they recently won the Queen's Award for Enterprise and Innovation. And uh, do watch the entire program. It's a fascinating insight into what you should be doing when it comes to uh, growing your business. I mean, it went from startup to a multi million pound multinational company in a matter of no time at all. Uh, on next week's program, we've got Mike Hampson and Adam Crawford of Bishop Gates Financial. They're going to be with us and they're going to be giving you advice on how to fast track your business. Uh, and really what we're going to be talking about in next week's program is understanding your marketplace and also your customers and your audience's needs in order to provide a product or even a service which is genuinely in demand. So often we'll come up with a great idea, at least we think it's a great idea, and then we realise there's no marketplace for it. Uh, but we will spend thousands, of millions in some cases of pounds, promoting something that nobody wants. Just because we think it's a good idea doesn't mean actually we've got it right. So be aware of that, and do watch out for Mike Hampson and Adam Crawford on next week's edition of Business Connections Live. Uh, my guest this evening is Jane Hardy. She's the Managing Director of Fabulous Women. We're talking about net winning, net Winning is what we're talking about. Um, let's just talk about, let's just go through the key things that are important about the organisation. It says here, Fabulous Women is about supporting women in business through networking opportunities, training and business support. We've talked a little bit about the networking opportunities, it's about referrals. Yes. Let's talk a little bit more about the training and also the business support that you as an organisation give. Let's kick off at the training. What kind of training do you actually give? We offer social media training, marketing training, sales training, SEO, whatever uh, anybody needs. I mm -hmm. listen to the members all the time. They tell me what kind of training they need, whether it's helping them do their books or what have you. We run half day courses by our members, for our members, for about £25. We're not in the business, the training business. These are often small companies mm -hmm. wanting to grow and we make that affordable for them. It's a really great idea as well. Do you think, uh, I, and I hate to keep harping on about the fact that it's fabulous women, because I know you've got marvellous men, but do you think women are at a disadvantage when it comes to you know, their training needs um, in business and, thing, and, for instance, their business support? Are they looked at in a different way when they go along with a great idea? Not at fabulous women, then, not. Mm. Um, depends where they go I guess. Mm -hmm. The Predominantly the women that come to Fabulous Women and Marvellous Men are from the corporate career, right. from the corporate world. They've either been made redundant or through ill health or had a family and decided actually they want a life work balance. We have uh, legal people, HR, experts, sales people across the board. And I was going to say to you, typically, what is the, the kind of professions that, or the kind of businesses that they're running? They're running anything from a neuro-linguistic... Pro programming, programming, so easy for you to say, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> to um, lawyers, solicitors, accountants. So we're talking about really high level We are here. talking high level people. When it comes to looking at high level organ um, businesses like that, the business support that you offer, what kind of support do you give them? We try and give them as much as we can. We, one of the new members, say, might be starting just a small business on their own. We will link them in with one of our more experienced people and stop them from making big financial mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember my first website cost me thousands and thousands. You can get a website now for 300. Can you? Yes. Do you tell where? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, a few of my members. <laughs> and I'm sure Mark 
Rouvray will be able to help oh, yes, you he would. Yes, indeed, indeed, yes. Yes, he's a marvellous man. Uh, yeah, fa and, uh, of course, he was on the programme a couple of weeks back. A, fa a fantastic guy. Yes. Uh, really, is he one of the guys who will come and talk about SEO as well to your members yes, as well? Yes, absolutely he is. What about this whole area when people are standing up and they're, you, you kind of make them focus on their business to look at yes. the, the benefits of what their business is? Yes. Do you give them any coaching on the best way of actually doing this? Because we call it the water cooler pitch. We get people, when we do media training here, we, we say it's very important to have 60 seconds in your mind's eye yes. about yourself and maybe about your career as well, because a lot of people can find out a lot about you very quickly. Yes. Do you give them any techniques when it, when it comes to having that 60 seconds? Absolutely. And there's a lot of videos on our website done by the members, for the members, about just networking, hints and tips and help on copywriting, on marketing. There's lots of videos on the website. You must have learned a lot as well, I would imagine, I've going through this as well. I've learned a huge amount. When it, when it comes to networking, do you think um, the people that attend your net winning events, do you think they, they, uh, they network in a different way? Yes, they do. Um, and we show them the way. And it is, again, about support, community, helping each other, relationships, which builds trust. Mm -hmm. And then sales come naturally. So, do they find it difficult when they come along to a meeting initially? Because I suppose it's the advantages for a young lady uh, or, or a lady to mm -hmm. be turning up at your event. It's, it's, do they sometimes feel like a fish out of water a little bit because of, you know, it's not the environment that they're going to be used to. And then they've really got to take on the techniques that you're showing them, that 60 seconds, and then the actual networking. For instance, I, I would imagine a lot of networking events are very, they're very hard-nosed sales driven, aren't they? We were saying this, you know, Can is be. it a sales meeting or is it a networking event? Mm -hmm. do you, how do you think people at your events actually differ in the way that they do network? Well, I didn't even get to my first net winning meeting mm -hmm. eight years ago. I got to the door, saw all these masses of people looking as though they were enjoying themselves, kn knew everybody. So I left. I went into the ladies' toilets for about 15 minutes and then I decided to go home. So I understand, and I'm not alone in that, that it, it can be quite scary to walk over that. Well, take us through then a typical meeting then. What, what's one of your meetings like? Just go through the, the agenda that we would get when we would turn up at a net winning okay. event for fabulous women. They arrive, there's a welcome desk, registration, always somebody that's new will always get introduced to one of my more seasoned networkers mm -hmm. and they will be looked after during for the duration of the meeting. Um, we have a 60 second round and sometimes pass business cards round, but often the meetings are too big just to do that. About how many people go? Uh, between 15 and 45, it depends. Crikey, that's quite a large meeting, isn't it? Quite a large networking yes. event, Dad. So, the smaller ones, yes, you can have time to pass business cards around, but the bigger ones, you don't get a chance. So we have to structure it. It is a structured format mm -hmm. and people will be given a, an agenda so they know what's going to happen next because there's nothing worse than surprises. No. And then we'll often have a live speaker, somebody that helps you juggle work and business and get your balance right because we are all more than just business people. We have lives. And then we'll have a business talk whether on getting more people on Twitter or any business feature. Hints and tips. It's all about giving information. And then we often have a coaching session or a hot seat where if somebody wants to bounce an idea off us or launch a new product and get feedback or somebody that just has a problem with their business, they can get support in a safe environment. So it's very, very different then from the traditional networking events then, isn't it? I mean, yes. I know that you, we've had Brad Byrne on the programme, yes. you've been a member of four networking for N, and yes. uh, very, very different from their particular networking events, isn't it? Yes, it is very. And, and uh, it, it seems to be more 
focused and targeted, obviously because it's looking at family life and the different roles that women take on yes. in society. It seems to be more geared, obviously, towards what they need out of it too. Yes, but dads are part of a family as well. And often these days they help with taking their kids to school and sharing the load these days because lots of women are really busy and they need help. Now you, you talked about the fact that you've got marvellous men. What, what do you think they add to it, if anything, uh, <laughs> to, the, to the whole thing, to the whole mix? Um, to have ma marvellous men coming in, Yes. Uh, what are you looking for out of them? Well, what are they looking to us for really? The support. It's a very open, non-threatening environment, fabulous women. And they have issues too in their business. And in an all predominantly male environment, they might not be quite so open about their problems or any issues. They can come to us knowing they're not going to be laughed at and welcomed and encouraged and supported. Do you think then at uh, conventional networking events then that it can be quite judgmental, that you are nearly on trial when you're there? Traditional networking, but not with net winning. Uh -huh. Now, if people want to get involved with the organisation, yes, um, is it an expensive thing? No, they can. We have membership packages starting at a hundred pounds for the year, and our highest cost is three hundred priced membership. But we also, for the three hundred pounds, we have a social media platform. They can write articles. We promote them. So we're their mini marketing department as well. Fantastic. I mean, the, the whole thing does sound absolutely fascinating. The, the whole, and what I'd like to do is actually get some of your experiences as well when it comes to actually being a woman in business too. Yes. And maybe so that we've got some takeaways so that ladies that are watching this can actually say, yeah, OK, there's a hint or a tip that yeah. actually is going to help me on a day-by-day -day basis. What I must remind you of right now, though, if you are watching uh, this particular program, don't forget we're going to be uh, broadcasting live from uh, this event very shortly. It is the UK's largest network networking event, the Business Networking Show 2014. It's going to be at the Wolverhampton uh, Racecourse and uh, we're looking forward to being there. It's on Friday the 19th of September and uh, there's a whole range of speakers that are going to be at the show. We've got Nick Clough, he's of course uh, the BBC's The Apprentice runner-up. He is actually a fascinating public speaker, uh, a great opportunity to actually hear what he's got to say. Uh, we've got uh, Stephen Thomas there as well, he's the author of Business Networking for Dummies, of course Brad Burton's going to be there. There's a picture of Brad. As if by... No, here it is. Uh, there he is. There's Brad Burton. Uh, Brad's going to be there. Made him work hard today. And also Dee Blicker was on the program the other week as well. Now, we are one of the uh, business partners for this particular show, uh, the media partner, and we're going to be broadcasting the entire event. We're going to be talking to different people from the show all the way through the event. So if you want to find out more, if you can't make it up to Wolverhampton on the 19th of September, then all you've got to do is come to Business Connections Live and you'll be able to watch what's going on at the event. We've got a roving camera that's going to be going around the hall as well. It should be a fascinating event. So if you do have the time, get yourself up there for Wolverhampton Racecourse Friday, the 19th of September. Incidentally, if you want to find out more about what we're up to, and uh, we've got a brand new deal that's going on the website as well at the moment. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this right now, but uh, it is our Business Connections Live website. If you go there, if you look here, we've got this sign up today for a free business video. Now what we're doing is if you sign up, one lucky person who signs up uh, each month will get themselves a video. And I'll just pop over to the other page and you'll get a kind of a general feel about what we're talking about here. But the video itself is worth just short of a thousand pounds. <laughs> there it is, finally got there. All you've got to do is sign up with your details and your name. Uh, that's right, a free web business video worth 875 pounds uh, when you sign up to Business Connections Live. One lucky business will actually get that video produced by us here in the studio and that's really as a way of saying thank you for watching the program uh, my guest this evening is Jane Hardy. She's from Fabulous Women, uh, a fantastic organisation that is geared towards maybe helping women who are going into business, but also, more importantly, it also takes uh, marvellous men as well. So there's a proper mix there. We've talked a lot about the organisation and you really get that there's an absolute passion that you have for, for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
What are the key things, though, in business do you think that, that ladies should be aware of? That, uh, uh, we, I keep saying they're at a disadvantage. I don't think they are, actually. No. Um, but what are the key things that they should remember? And what are the problems and the hurdles that they, are, they come up against most regularly? And the, the kind of feedback you get back yep. from the ladies that come to your meetings? Always remember to have a goal in mind. Always make it a very big goal. Don't try and struggle on your own. There's lots of people out there willing to help and at an affordable price. Uh, don't spend all weekend doing your expenses. Get a bookkeeper in at half your, the price that it would take and use the people that you meet. You cannot do it all yourself. I have got a great team around me and I do and concentrate on what I enjoy and what I feel good about and what I hope I'm good at. Do you think that's the big mistake that a lot of people make is that they're trying to be a jack of all trades yes. and they end up being a master of any? Yes, and that's a big problem. I hate accounts. If you, if you wanted to do accounts, you'd have been an accountant. Yes, and how much is your time or my time worth or spending all weekend doing the accounts? Mm. Put a value on how much are you worth per hour. All right. And then probably double it. Do you, do you think people do undervalue themselves? Yes, totally. We have a, a member in our organisation who is going out there helping people set the price, correct prices. What do you think the, the unique issues are to, to women in business then? Our confidence, I think, setting out. I once heard a guy say, oh, saw a job in a paper, I'm going after that. And I said, well, hold on, you've only got half those skills. Oh, that's fine. I'll bluff the rest. I'll bluff the rest. <laughs> a woman will take a look at that, seat, uh, that advert and say, oh, no, I've got nine tenths, but not the tenth, so I won't apply for it. Do you think we're not sometimes we're not uh, women aren't as adv as adventurous as as men are when it comes to going th for jobs like that? Yes. I mean, I suppose it's down to risk taking, isn't but it? Risk taking, exactly. And we we aren't natural risk takers. Mm -hmm. We're the nurturers, we're the supporters. That's what's happened over time. Do you think when it comes to actually dealing with um, with dealing with a woman that is in business, that there is a different technique then that men should actually consider too. I mean, do you often see um, that people stereotype women in business? Yes. Somebody once uh, came up to me and talked at me, a gentleman talked at me mm -hmm. for 10 minutes and then thrust his business card in my hand and then said, oh, and what do you do? And I said, X. And he said, oh, I'm not interested. Now he's an estate agent. Um, I don't know whether he still is. I haven't seen him for a long time on the circuit. Mm -hmm. But my best friend is a property developer that buys and lets houses. A perfect contact. A perfect contact. Do you think people do have empathy at network networking events? You've been to traditional networking events. Yes. Do you think that is one of the big problems that people have, that they just don't get other people? Yeah. We are empathetic and we understand the trials and we're open and honest about the difficulties that small businesses face mm. and you know if I've got a problem I'll you know I'll share it and say help. We, we were talking about the way that, that women approach business what what are when it comes to the setting up of a, of a business are the problems that women have to overcome? Well, I think anybody that has to overcome, we have to decide initially what we're going to sell, how much money we're going to need to make at the end of the year. Um, do I go limited? Am I going to be a sole trader? Is it going to be a partnership? What are all the pros and cons of each? Do I need a website? Do I need video for my website? What is SEO? What is marketing? What is social media? Twitter? What's a tweet? Don't know. There's vast 
issues out there that we all have to overcome. Now, as an organisation then, what would be the, the overall business package that you would say that, women, that somebody, well, in fact, any business is starting up at the moment, somebody comes along to you, do you recommend to them, yes, uh, get your marketing campaign in place, include social media? That's one of the things, but you've got to have pillars. You've got to build those pillars before you go out there and market. You've got to ensure that you've got a good accounting package in place, because if you don't know your numbers, you're going to be dead in the water. If you haven't got a marketing strategy in place, find one. If you don't know how to sell or network, learn. There's so much out there. Go to Business Connections Live. Yeah, indeed. Watch the programmes. Watch the programmes and show you'll you. learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's so it's very important then to have those pillars down to build that house, isn't yes. it? Yes. You know, going back to what you were saying about being empathetic and, and people not really understanding when they're communicating with somebody mm -hmm. about what they're actually saying or where it can lead them. Yeah. Um, I was at a event, this is uh, several years ago in fact, uh, when I was working in radio, and this woman, it was a woman actually, I remember, I remember that to this very day, uh, she walked up to me and she went, which one are you then? And I said, I'm Steve Highland. And she said, don't like him. I went, hang on a second, pinch me, it hurts, cut me, I bleed. I was actually standing in front of her. And it was that complete feeling that a disembodied vow, a voice on the radio yes. was not a real person to her. Yeah. yeah, there I was standing in front of her and she was giving her comments like that. Didn't like her very much either, actually. <laughs> but it's neither here nor there. Uh, I'll tell you what, you're watching Business Connections. I've got Jane Hardy from Fabulous Women uh, with us at the moment. Uh, don't forget as well, also we're looking for Marvellous Men. We'll talk a little bit about what Marvellous Men is all about in just a few moments time and it isn't the case that you've got fabulous women and then you've got marvelous men who come in to help the fabulous women uh, it's a level playing field here and we'll explain a little bit more about that uh, don't forget if you're watching this on youtube right now thank you very much indeed but don't forget to subscribe just press the little button that is sitting up there that'd be a great help uh, do check out the website too businessconnectionslive.com and who knows it could be you just walking away with that fantastic business video for your website just go to our our website at businessconnectionslive.com is as simple and as straightforward as that. And don't forget, do watch out for our Twitters and our tweets and our LinkedIn. We're, we're doing it all. We're out there all over the place. So do keep involved. And if you feel that you've got some business advice that you'd like to offer and to share with people, then why don't you come on the program? We can Skype you in, no matter where you are in the world. We can Skype you in. You can come into the studio live and you can sit down and you can impart the information that you've got. If it is a help to small to medium scale enterprises or for that matter for any business at all just let us know and join us here live on the program each Wednesday evening where we kick off at six o'clock. You're watching Business Connections Live and to maybe give you more of an insight and to really convince you and to tell you what other people think about being on the program just have a quick look at this. If you're a business owner and you need advice on how to make your business more successful, then Business Connections Live TV is just for you. Our leading industry experts cut out the guesswork for growing businesses. How to use social media, what to expect from your accountant, web design, SEO and so much more. Business Connections Live TV is here to give you the motivation you need to succeed. How are you doing? My name is Brad Burton. I'm the motivational speaker that everyone's talking about right now and I'm on Business Connections Live. What a show. What a show. People, do check it out. If you're struggling with Facebook and LinkedIn. Most people that I meet are on LinkedIn. Virtually, you know, there's 14 and a half million people just mm -hmm. in the UK. Uh, I think the figures currently are 238 million people worldwide. But I would say that most of them don't really understand how to use it. How to present your ideas more effectively. Hello, I'm Philip Skinner, Shaw Walker Lees. A brilliant way to get message across. Um, I'm actually thinking that we might switch away from our quarterly newsletter to do a video and, and get it sent through to staff and clients. To generating leads and finding new business. Hi, I'm Jim McLaughlin, Managing Director of Business Development Company Axial and I'd just like to say what a pleasure it's been to have the opportunity to appear on Business Connections Live. Subscribe and be part of the Business Connections Live TV online community for free. 
Business Connections Live TV every Wednesday, 6 p.m. GMT, or catch up on the Business Connections Live TV YouTube channel. Make certain your business is connected with Business Connections Live TV. You're watching Business Connections Live. Steve Harlow with you here. My guest this evening is Jane Hardy, Managing Director of Fabulous Women. Now, we did say at the very beginning that it's not just about fabulous women, it's also about marvellous men. What role do they have in, in this net winning organisation? Well, they have a very big role to play in the support I get from fabulous women. Um, Antonio Falco, like I said, is one of my mentors. I had now have a group leader, my first marvellous man group leader because they get about support and men are just as equal as women. Are we? If we, you are, oh, yes. I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> yes. Thankfully, yes, that's good. And they're welcomed. And a bit like two accountants might come along together as well. Mm -hmm. One male, one female. You will feel more of an affinity towards one person or the other. We give people the choice. Do you want to work with a man, woman, both? There, I suppose, you know, if we're, if we're getting down to the nitty gritty of it, I suppose there is this worry sometimes. I mean, you were a hard nosed businesswoman that was selling multi million pound mm -hmm. uh, software into large multinational corporates. Yes. Um, but sometimes women do, it is this perception of women that the gravitas that a woman will carry when they go into a meeting or when they go to a networking event. Is it a case that it works very well as a group of women together, but once you start to get this mix in business, that men don't take women seriously? We are the PAs of this world, We're the, the PAs, secretaries. Yeah. Yes. So is that, the issue, is that the issue that a lot of women come up against? Yes, we can put our business in place. We, yes. can, we can say, right, we've got an, our accountant, we've got a great product. Yes. Uh, we know what our, our benefits of our, our product are. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got a fantastic business, but because we're a woman, Yes. We're not seen with the same gravitas as a man would be. Yes, maybe, but they're in the wrong not, place. It's not a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the wrong place, Steve, if they come across that. Really? Yes. How do you mean by that? There, there are different networks, different environments for everybody, for everybody to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, slightly more hard-nosed networking groups and there's more sort of open and friendly networking groups. You can go to one and you know if it's right for you straight away. Are there areas of business that you think that, that women uh, work better and are more successful in business than a man would be because of their, their feminine skills? Yes, like the um, divorce solicitors, for example. The um, uh, Put you on the spot now. Yes, I? no, that's okay. Yeah. Um, it's completely gone out of yeah. my head. So, divor so divorce is it is. So, it's is it the people to people skills? That yes, be and it's a bit her? like David Cameron's put in women into his government mm. that look after the homes and other things, so they have an affinity with what they do. Mm. But it is important, though, isn't it, from the outside looking in that. The, the people are good at what they do, isn't it? It isn't yes. the case that they're a woman or they're a man. No. It's that they're actually good at actually doing the job that they've been asked to do or the job that they're doing. Yes, and they show their professionalism. We almost have to be twice as good, or we feel we have to be twice as good as a man. And that can be a real There's issue. Some, yeah. I mean, do you, do you, when, you get, um, when you get the women who sort of, when the ladies do turn up at the meeting, do they, are they asking advice? What are the typical questions that they are asking about? If we take the business side away yes. from it, so we've got the, you know, we're setting up all the traditional things that a business would need to set yes. up. Yes. But when they come in and they talk to you about the issues of being a woman in business, what are the, what are the major issues they have? They're not talking about that, Steve. They're talking in general terms really? about business they're not saying oh I lost out because it was a a man or what have you no we have the same issues they're just different issues I think same issues but same different issues, issues. But, different different issues. issues. But, I see, I see. but in in a different scale I would imagine yes I don't think yes it's hard to do marketing it's hard to find the right person to help you Yes, it's hard to get that work-life balance. Maybe that's the issue, the work-life balance. Mm -hmm. It's been predominantly male going out there, bringing in the money, and the woman's been at home. The woman is still at predominantly responsible for the home and the shopping and the kids and running a business as well. Time management is a big issue.
So t typically the profile then of a woman, now we've, we've already kind of touched on this, but they are, they are what, single parents, they are women who have been in business, they are women who have been made redundant. Yes. So it, it's, it's the, full, the full scope of things. Yes. When you meet somebody, it's, it's a, c can you kind of tell where they fit in to where business is? Are there people that will turn up and go, actually, you're not really right for doing business? they will soon realize it mm -hmm. and but there's all the support out there that they can get somebody might just want a part-time job a part-time role their own business instead of having to fit in around a company schedule when they've got a five and six year old child at home they can't do a nine to five job because sick the child gets sick school holidays whatever we're having to constantly juggle and doing a part-time job from home is one of the answers all right so they come along they don't realize the facilities that you as fabulous women actually will provide yeah give us a, a couple of examples of success stories then where someone's come to you and they've gone I'm here at the very beginning of running this business yes. and a couple of years down the line it's all worked. Have you got any stories like that? Yes, I've got Go lots on, of stories. There's um, three girls in particular, one's a sales coach, one's a marketeer and the other one's a social media expert. They're now launching a product together and doing training and succeeding and selling into the uh, medium-sized business arena now they've pretty well left the small business arena because together they've grown and um, they're making a real success about it. And is that because they met at one of the meetings? They met at one of the meetings, yes. Fantastic. Right, it that's is. one. Give us another. Oh, gosh, there's um, people that started off as a jewellery maker, as an example. She's now collaborated with a dressmaker and they're now in the high street shops. There's somebody else... Um, Jane Plan Diet, she's now on the telly, launched her product nationwide, all doing great together. And that's just from the collaboration of going along to the meetings and coming together. If I go along to a meeting for the first time, yes. what will be the thing that I will get out of it? What will be the thing as I walk out that door that will make me come back to the second one? It'll be inspiration and if others can do it, so can I. Yes, I'm a bit nervous about starting my business or I'm not too sure. Then they hear everybody else's success stories in the room and they just think, yes. And it is all about inspiration, isn't it? It is. Listen, in a few moments time, I'm going to ask you to really give us, this is a bit you've been dreading, isn't it? <laughs> uh, a, a little bit of reasons why they should go along to fabulous women, mm -hmm. why men should go along to fabulous yes. women what's in it for them yes. and uh, what they can get out of it and the real benefits and also how they should go about uh, contacting and where they can find out where their, their local fabulous women uh, meetings are actually or net winning events are uh, taking place. Uh, it really is. It's a fantastic opportunity if you are um, a young lady and uh, you're in. See, I, 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 I'm treading on eggshells here, and I, you know, young lady, old lady, medium age lady. And if you're a woman and you're in business, you know, it's time to be taken absolutely seriously. The the issues sometimes are that I suppose in business a lot of people do look upon business or at least a self-employed business as being a male-dominated world mm. to a certain extent, and it. It can be, I think, you know, to get across that borderline initially of getting your business up and running, making certain that all the pillars are in place to make certain that you're going to have a successful business it can be a very difficult thing uh, to kick off. So where do you go if you are a woman and you're in business? Where do you go to get that coaching? Where do you go to get that, that motivation to continue your business and to, to move it forward? Who do you talk to when it comes to social networking? How do you find out about that? Yes, you can read all the books. I mean, we had... Nikki Creel on the program the other week and you know how the Twitter she's got a fantastic book uh, that's uh, sitting here you could get a book like that and that's going to tell you how to go about you know how it works why it works how to find followers and what the tweet but it, sometimes it helps to have someone who will actually stand in front of you and actually give you that advice. Maybe one of Jane's particular uh, net winning events is going to be the place you're going to go. And remember as well about net winning, and I love the fact that it is net winning and it's not about networking. If, you, if you're going to a networking event and all you're looking for is sales, as Jane says, that's a sales meeting. 
But if you're going along to actually get to to share what you do, uh, to actually network with other people, which may bring recommendations, and it may not happen on the day, it may not happen for months to come. But the fact that your voice the things that you do are being carried away from that meeting and somebody somewhere will, may say one day, actually, you're looking for this. I know someone who can do that. And then they put you in touch with your business. That's what networking is all about. And the moment that happens, then surely you must be winning at that point. Hence the reason that this is all about net winning. So you've got this huge support network that is sitting there waiting for you to give you the encouragement to put down the foundations that you need to actually get your business up and running and to get it moving along successfully. Because at the end of the day, that's actually what you want to do. Uh, once again, if you want to find out more details about uh, uh, Jane's organization, you can just go along to the website here. It is Fabulous Women, but don't forget too, if you're a bloke, you can go too, because you will be marvelous men. It is connect, share, grow and succeed. And there's a whole load there. You can find out about the marketplace, the different meetings and events you can see from Berkshire all the way through to Surrey, London, Hampshire, East and West Sussex. Uh, there's a chat room on there as well. I mean, the website really is very good, isn't it? I mean, what else can we find on a website that's going to be of use to us? Well, it's going to be the videos, tutorials. We have also have skill swaps where, say, you wanted your carpets cleaning and you were a marketing expert. You could do a skill swap on there as well. That's a really good idea. I like that. Yes. And, so and we offer that. Do a lot of people do that? Yes, do they? they do. What a great idea. Yeah, we do that. We do. We have hourlies where, say you want a massage for an hour, we might have a massage therapist and you're a bookkeeper that needs an hour's massage occasionally and swap it for some of the bookkeeping skills or... That is such a good idea, isn't yes, it? Yes, there's lots of good ideas. And it's the members that create these good ideas. And I'm just about. there to facilitate. You're just a conduit. Yes. A I'm conduit of conduit. great ideas. Yes. I've just gone on to the uh, resources here, and you can see there's a whole range of different resources that are available. Let's zoom in a wee bit. So uh, 50 tips, tricks and tools to help you and your small business, marketing communications, basic strategy. There's a lot of great and useful information sitting on this site. Uh, a member of the Small Business uh, Federation as well, so you got that. Uh, articles that, uh, are these written by your members in or fact? By the members, yes, Yeah. for the members. And you've got, and there's also um, a whole range of tutorials on there as well. Yes. I'll tell you what, this has been a fascinating insight. If you are a woman in business and you're looking for maybe a little bit additional help, maybe you've been finding it a bit of a struggle, maybe Jane's organization is the organization you should be getting in touch with. Just go to the website, it is fabulous-women.co dot uk and you can find out all about them there it's as easy and as straightforward as that and it's absolutely going to be perfect for you by the way if you've enjoyed tonight's program and you think to yourself you know that was quite interesting i wouldn't mind a program like that for my business don't forget you could have one for your business all you got to do is contact us here at business connections live and we'll put together what we call the virtual newsroom we can have a studio just like this one and uh, your business could be the one that we are promoting and you can then put that on your website uh, if you want more details contact us at studio at businessconnectionslive.com or you can call us on 01784 256 777. Fantastic. Listen, guests on next week's program is Mike um, Hampson and Adam Crawford of Bishopsgate Financial. We're going to be looking at um, how to fast track your business. But before we finish tonight, <laughs> Jane Hardy, Managing Director of Fabulous Women, talking about net winning. Down camera number one is going to be the camera we're going to be looking at. So just uh, say who you are uh, your organization straight down the camera and really just tell us the things that we should be remembering about fabulous women I'm Jane Hardy managing director of fabulous women and marvelous men of course if you are looking for a safe supportive and inspirational environment in which to grow your business you've come home customers suppliers or potential collaborators are all there waiting for you it's a testing ground for your business. It's a safe environment, yet professional networking where real business people are and sales come naturally along with referrals. We do do business the feminine way. It's all about community, collaboration, and like I said before, relationships, which results in trust. 
Fabulous Women is the network that successful business owners choose to connect, share, grow and succeed in their business. Our ethos is to bring people together, to collaborate and to support each other, and to learn and to promote you. Remember, strangers are just friends and colleagues that you haven't met yet. Thank you. I like that. Very good indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Jane, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you today. And I'll tell you what, we, we, we must come along to one of the events you and just should. sit there um, as, um, as wallflowers at the side and, and watch what goes on. But, and also get involved too. We'd love to come along. Yes, so anytime. We, we will do that. Uh, Jane Hardy, Managing Director of Fabulous Women, absolutely fascinating insight into what you should be doing when it comes to developing your business. Uh, once again, on the programme next week, it is Mike Hampson and, and Adam Crawford of Bishopgate Financial with advice on how to fast track uh, your business. And that pretty much wraps up the show for this evening. Uh, listen, uh, we hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Don't forget, we're back again next week with another fantastic show, live every Wednesday night at six o'clock. But from Jane Hardy and myself, Steve Hunt, have yourself a great and successful week in your business. Till next week, bye for now. Bye-bye.